Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So we always get the question after we do an acid etch, what is the process? How do you guys go through and develop that weld nugget and get that macro etch on there? Uh, so we're going to go through and explain exactly how we do that step by step today. But before we get to that, we got a big announcement for you. We're actually going to be attending the 2019 Good of the Land Fest in Temple, Texas. So make sure to stop by. The event happens October 26th. The event's 9 to 5. We're going to be doing all kinds of cool classes. Stop in, pick up some Weld.com merchandise, meet the crew, try your hand at some welding. Cameraman, roll that beautiful bee footage. If you thought last year was awesome, hold on to your hats. This year is bigger and better in every way. The event will take place at the Texas Early Days Tractor and Engine Association Showgrounds in Temple, Texas. Covering 58 acres of history, it's the perfect location to celebrate old skills brought back to life. Blacksmithing, woodworking, campfire cooking, metal casting, welding, printing press operation, pottery, animal husbandry, antique tool restoration and operation. The event is Saturday, October 26th. The Good of the Land, brought to you by Evaporust, super safe rust remover. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is find yourself a weld coupon. So I've got a little T-joint here with a weld on that side, and I just want to expose this nugget. doesn't have to be a T-joint. You can do this on a groove, plug weld, slot weld, wherever. You know, just, just cut it, bisect that weld. You don't want to do it on the end where you have a crater, uh, because we want, to, we want to see, you know, kind of what happened in the welding area, not at the termination or the start. So I have a 60 grit right here, it's a little two inch, like a dot co pad, and I've got a variable speed furred grinder. This thing just twist locks on here. You can use these with the uh, air compressor or, you know, if you have uh, just a regular grinder is going to work. Uh, but I recommend variable speed going at a low speed. This is the lowest setting that it has. And we're just going to go through and just get out any of the deep saw marks and gouges. We don't have to polish up the whole thing. Just the immediate area where that weld nugget is. Just try and get all the marks out where that blade made contact with the metal. You can cut it with a cutting torch, cut it with a porta band, sawzall, whatever. So you can see it's already starting to look smoother. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump up to an 80 grit. Same type of wheel, same type of pad. Just continue this on. It's not too many steps. It gets smoother each time. Now I just have a red polishing pad. So I'm gonna use that, clean it up just a little bit further. If you can get it to a mirrored polish, you get better results. You can use polishing compound on here and then wipe the, uh, the compound off with a lacquer thinner or an acetone. That usually works good. The higher degree you polish it, the better that weld nugget's gonna pop out. I used to do this for my students as a welding instructor, show them the differences in penetration profiles. And it's a cool little trick because they can, they can visually see, you know, that just because a weld looks good on the outside, doesn't mean it's good on the inside. Okay, now the last one is just like a little cotton pad cotton buffing wheel. This is where you can add buffing compound if you want. Something that's got a little bit of grit into it. Nothing, nothing too much. I'm just going to polish the little area up. Clean it up just a little bit more. We're probably not going to get to a mirrored finish, but you're still going to be able to get pretty decent results out of this. Alright, that should do pretty well for us. If you have the opportunity, go ahead, you know, you can put in some 120, 220 grit in there before you switch over to your polishing pads. I just don't have any of those wheels available for me. Okay, so what we have here is ferric chloride 10%. You can use nitol 5 or 10%. You can use PC board etchant. Uh, if you're in a pinch, you can use navel jelly, and you can get that at your big box store, home improvement stores. Uh, a lot of different stuff you can use. Um, ferric chloride, nitol, you can probably get that from your local welding supply store. If not, they can order it for you. You can also get it online, okay? So what we're gonna do is make sure you have some latex gloves on, rubber gloves, chemical gloves, safety glasses. Definitely wanna make sure you have safety glasses. I'm just gonna use some Q-tips, okay? You got one of these, I'm just gonna dip it right in here and then we'll take our coupon and we'll just add a little bit of this stuff on here and you'll see it starts to develop pretty quick. Now, if you use navel jelly, you're gonna have to give 
maybe five, ten minutes. You can apply this stuff pretty liberally, and you can see that it's already starting to develop that weld nugget. Just let it set right there. See, we got good penetration on this one in the horizontal and vertical leg. Deep penetration into the root. It's exactly what we were after. All right, guys, so we know it's a short episode, but we get that question a lot, so we just wanted to kind of do a, an in-depth episode on exactly how to do that, the process, some of the safety precautions you're going to want to take. Make sure you go to Good to the Land Fest. You know, check out their website. Cameraman's going to put a link in the description. Come on out and see us. Uh, take some of the classes we're going to be doing out there. It's going to be an awesome time. We've got a lot of cool content coming up. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram because we're going to have some special releases up within the next couple of weeks. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned to that. Until next time, make every well better than your last.